The 32-bit gaming scene has seen somewhat of a revival over the past couple of years, with publishers like Puppet Combo and Bryce Butcher releasing some absolute gems of retro throwbacks on the Nintendo Switch. And now comes Beast Watch Meet and Mayhem, a retro-style horror shooter from Sonambulist Games, and one in which you as a lowly security guard working his first night shift in a slaughterhouse face unimaginable horrors as the animals look to seek their revenge. I'm a huge fan of these PS1 era inspired tiles though, so let's take a look at Beast Watch, see how it shapes up, and find out whether or not it's worth your time and cash. So, nothing too deep in the way of storyline with this one then, like I said, we play as a security guard starting his first night shift, and the game opens with us meeting up with this old fella who after 30 years on the job is about to retire, and we are his replacement. From what he tells us though, it's a pretty cushy job all things considered, however he also tells us that after only a few weeks on the job, he requested to be transferred from working as a watchman at the slaughterhouse, where we're going to be working, to the offices, as he couldn't stand the screams of the animals. And just then, we hear this. Now, as you'd expect heading out to investigate, bad things happen and we're left to progress alone. But unfortunately, there's very little else in the way of a storyline apart from a couple of documents, so we're kind of left to puzzle out the story on our own. And it's not a deep one by any means, but it would have been nice to have had a little more explanation as to what was happening. Now, I had expected gameplay in this one to be a little more slow paced and atmospheric, and indeed in the opening minutes it feels that way. We arm ourselves with a nightstick and start to explore the offices, as unsettling grunts lead us to our first encounter with a pigman. But following this, we're upgraded to a pistol, and the game quickly takes on more of a survival horror theme with a ton of enemies to kill and very little ammo to go around. The combat in Beast Watch is very simple though, some standard FPS aim and shoot mechanics, a couple of different weapons to find including a pistol and shotgun, and enemies are pretty tanky but you can preserve ammo by shooting at the heads of them to take them down in just a couple of hits. Even then though, the sheer number of enemies will leave you lacking, so you will be searching high and low for ammo at any opportunity. There are also very few medkits to find in this game, and these enemies aren't too difficult to dodge, but they do hit hard. But worst of all, the game only saves when you enter a new location. Areas are large though and take about 25 minutes to complete, and the developer loves to hide enemies away or have them burst out of nowhere on you, so a few hits and you're dead, and it's back to the start to sit through this speech again. Luckily, I found a little exploit that I could utilise, as the enemy AI is pretty poor and if you close a door on them, they'll just continue to walk into it with the belly clipping through it, which you can then whack with your nightstick to kill them. And unfortunately, I found myself utilising this at every opportunity to conserve ammunition and avoid unwarranted deaths. Now, I don't mind a good survival horror, but sadly, the variety just isn't here with this one. There are a few different enemies, all of which lose the fear factor pretty quickly, as you'll encounter hordes of them which simply rush towards you, and there's just no real subtlety with the horror elements, with frequent jump scares being the main source of scares in this one. When it comes to the puzzles, there's the usual find the key to open the door thing going on, though the doors often have no markings on them, so you'll be backtracking often and searching every door you can find, and the more cryptic puzzles come in the form of text, which you most definitely need to write down, as one of them gives you three codes but only requires one of them to be entered into a keypad, and another is just a bunch of algebra where you have to actually do the math to work out the code values. Overall though, it's very simple stuff, which is fine for what it is, but could most definitely have been better had the developer toned down the action, been a little smart with the puzzles, and thrown in an extra save or two for good measure. The level design of the game is relatively decent though. We progress through the offices and adjoining barn area into the slaughterhouse, and it all makes sense and looks pretty decent. There are vents to find and crawl through, a few environmental puzzles to solve, and some jumping puzzles, though the jumping in the game is a royal pain in the ass, with edges of surfaces pushing you back. 
but it is doable and adds a little extra variety. Finally, let's talk about a few final niggles I have with the game. Firstly, there are several side areas you can explore which offer up additional ammo and medkits, but these areas are often packed with enemies and the prize usually isn't worth the effort. I've already mentioned the poor enemy AI, but you'll often see a bunch of enemies just standing around, further reducing the fear factor, and enemies won't actually engage you until you're either in the line of sight or shoot at them, and other enemies won't react to these actions either. Lastly, the game is rather buggy. Enemies will frequently get stuck in walls, and that little clipping exploit that I mentioned did backfire on me, as the sheep enemies were able to clip through the doors and shoot at me instead. All in all though, Beast Watch is a game which could have been great, but just falls short in my opinion due to its heavy focus on gunplay, some undercooked puzzle mechanics, and an annoying save system which has you replaying levels multiple times if you accidentally screw up. I have to say though, it's still a decent little shooter, but so far as it being a horror shooter, aside from a few jump scares, the most tension that I felt was with whether or not I'd actually have enough ammo to make it to the next save point. Its visuals are on point for the era that inspired it, and its sound design is minimal with a lack of music really adding to the atmosphere of the game, and those animal sounds are reminiscent of classic Doom games, so they've done a really good job here in my opinion. But in short, it's worth a play if you prefer to run and gun rather than run and hide. That's it for this one though, like and subscribe to support the channel, a big thanks to the patrons and to you the viewers for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.